In this video, we're going to take a look at numeric variables in Python and doing calculations. People often wonder if you have to be good at mathematics to be good at programming, and the answer is no, you don't. It is true that if you are good at mathematics, you probably will be good at programming because they are somehow similar things. But we don't use mathematics all that much in programming, except when we are actually writing some kind of inherently mathematical program. So you, you don't need to know mathematics to do programming is the short answer. Now in the previous video, we saw a program that assigned a string to a variable, but we can also assign numbers to variables. I've created a new empty file here. Let's create a variable and We'll imagine that we've got a plot of land and we've measured how wide it is and how long it is. And we want to work out the area of it by multiplying those two things together. So I'm going to say here, width equals 15. Now what I've done here is I've declared a variable width. I just made that up. It's just what I decided to call it. And I've used the assignment operator to assign a value to it. But notice this time, the value that I've assigned is not a string, it's a number. Because it's not a string, it doesn't go in quotes. So if I were to write this, that's legitimate Python, it's fine. But what I'm doing here is taking some text, which happens to look like the number 15, and assigning it to the width variable. If I get rid of the quotes, I'm doing something fundamentally different. I'm assigning the actual number 15 to this variable. It not only looks like 15, it is actually 15. Now let's create one called length and set that equal to maybe 22 or something. Now we can multiply the two together. To store the result of the calculation, I'm going to want another variable. Let's call it area. And I'm going to say area equals width multiplied by length. Now notice that in Python and many other programming languages, the sign for multiplication is an asterisk. It's not an X like this because, well, that's just the letter X. So we use this instead to avoid confusion with any letters. Now let's try to print out the result of our calculation. So I'm going to say print and let's supply a string here that explains what we're printing area of land colon and a space. So this is just text, so it goes in quotes. And now I'm going to try to do something that actually won't work. I'm going to say plus area. Let's run this and see what actually happens. So what we get is a thing called a traceback. Now this looks alarming. You may already have seen tracebacks already if you've been experimenting, but don't be scared by them. The entire purpose of them is to give you information about what went wrong. And usually what you're looking for in tracebacks is the line in your code where it went wrong. And we can see here line six. You may see multiple lines mentioned in tracebacks. Some of them may be in code that you've not written. So you're really looking for a line in your actual program. So this is numeric variables.py where the error occurred. So this is where the error occurred, line six. And it says, can only concatenate str, not int, to str. What's it talking about? Well, this is a string. And we know that we can join strings with plus which functions then as a concatenation operator for concatenating or joining things together. But here we've actually got a variable that refers to a number. These are what we call integers actually. In other words, whole numbers and often we call them ints, short for integer, which just means a whole number. So when we multiply these two whole numbers together, we get another whole number. And that means that what we're trying to do here is join a whole number with a string. And the plus operator 
does not know how to do that. However, the problem is easily solved. And one way to solve it, short of changing the plus to a comma, which I don't want to do just yet, is we can write str open round bracket and the closing round bracket goes around area. So we're passing area to the string function. And what that does is it turns this int integer, in other words, into a string. And now we can join these two strings with the plus operator. Let's try it again. And you can see it now runs. And it says area of land 330, which if these were meters, then this would be in square meters. If we take a look at the Python built-in functions, we can see that there is indeed a str built-in function. And it says it returns a string version of object where object is whatever you pass to it. So we can say that this, and for that matter, this, are objects. So every, almost everything in Python really is an object. This is an object and so on. But the problem is this is an int object and this is a string object. And we can't join those two together with plus until we've turned the int into a string. Try it out for yourself and see if you can think of something that you might want to calculate. By the way, if you want to do small experiments, you can also just type Python by itself and that will open a kind of Python console down here. So I could do 15 times 22 and it will give me the answer. And I can also write variables and things in here if I want to. I don't find this much use for learning Python because I just find it easier to type Python into text files, which I can actually save. But it is pretty useful for doing quick calculations if you have a need for that. To get out of this Python terminal, we just do quit round bracket, so we call the quit function in here. This is a free video from my course, Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners. I'm releasing the first couple of chapters of this course completely for free on YouTube to get you started with Python. I plan to upload new videos here to YouTube every Monday and every Thursday for at least a couple of months. If you're interested in the complete course, which teaches you Python from scratch and eventually progresses to things like creating graphical user interfaces and using neural networks, principal component analysis, cluster analysis, all that stuff, and much more besides. Then you can find a link in the description or just go to this URL on the screen right here. If you finish the whole course, you'll be able to write all kinds of general purpose programs in Python and use Python to do machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.